right, I've gotten a lot of questions about this over the past year and more recently based on the last video that I posted. I've made a video about this, but I wanna keep it simple because I continue to get questions and I just think this is a really good technique for exposure. Just to describe what a thick negative is real quick, the more that the film was exposed, the thicker that it is. There's more stuff on it. There's more of an image on it. Emotion. If there's no exposure on the film, it's very thin. This is film that light never hit. It is clear. And this is film that was just out in the open. So this would be fully white image, and this would be a fully dark image because all the light would pass through. You would get a white scan and then you would invert it and it would be black, meaning nothing happened on that film. When you scan this, not a lot of light would get through this. So the scan would be black and then you invert it and it would be white. So having a thick negative is good because it means that there's a lot of information on your film and having a thick negative in digital means overexposing so that there's a lot of information there. And the key is simply just to not clip your sensor. And there's some ways to do this that make it easy when you're shooting. So first I'll hop over to the camera and just show you what I would do to overexpose a scene. All right, so we turn on our camera and we see this. No bueno, increase RND until we see something that looks acceptable. This looks acceptable to me, but I want a thick negative, AKA very bright exposure. So I'm going to look at our false colors and increase our exposure until it clips. So it's clipping right here. So then I would decrease the exposure just until the clipping goes away. You could do that through ND, iris, or shutter. For now, I will drop two stops of ND and we're clear here. The issue here is that this looks weird. What we wanna do is have this monitor look normal for whoever's watching, but I still wanna shoot at 800 ISO, which I will show you in a minute why. So because of that, I'm gonna put a LUT on. I'll try a minus two stop. That looks okay. And here's a minus three and the minus three is what I want. I can have this on here and look at my false colors based on the log image and not the LUT. In scenarios where it's the light is changing outside, I would check this more often. And if things are really moving fast, I would be more careful with doing this and potentially not get that close to clipping, but still be overexposed. So now we can hop into Resolve. So as long as I don't clip the sensor, I'm good to bring down the exposure specifically with the HDR wheels. I've mentioned this a lot of times, but you want to map these to your color space in gamma. So I have this map to the Alexa and we're looking at the log image. I have a look on the timeline and then I can bring this down. And when we bring it down like this, the global wheel in the HDR wheels, when the HDR wheels are mapped, changes your exposure photographically. And that is the same way that your exposure would change if you change your shutter speed or change your aperture or ISO or ND. And we also have a lot of room in the shadows. Look at where the shadows were captured. So this is a lot of information that's on the negative, on the recording, so like a thick negative. We have two clips here. This is actually the same exact clip shot in RAW and have one set to 160 and one set to 3200. That's the only difference between the two clips. And this is why I want to use exposure compensation LUTs over just shooting a lower ISO. I will put the look on here and get the 160 clip, 160 ISO, through the mapped HDR wheels to be where I want it for the look I'm going for. And this is just the exposure and nothing else. And maybe somewhere around here. And then I'll take a still of this and go to our 3200 clip and bring down our exposure to match. And I'm looking at this yellow right here. And that is pretty good right there. And we can see the difference here between a 160 ISO clip and a 3200. In this type of scenario right here, I much prefer the 3200 because it has softer highlights. We can see that right here. And this looks more filmic to me. 160, 3200. Sometimes if I'm shooting in Airy Raw, I'll shoot at 800 because that's the native ISO. And then in post, change it to 3200 and bring the exposure way down. Because as we can see right here, there's something special that happens in the 3200 when it's brought down. I use exposure compensation LUTs that I created over lowering the ISO. In the end of the day, lowering your ISO is similar to using an exposure compensation LUT, but the same way that using an ND filter lets you retain the aperture that you want to shoot at, using 
using a stop reduction LUT lets you retain the ISO that you want to shoot at for whatever preference you have on your distribution of dynamic range above and below middle gray and for your choice of grain. So that is the reason why I started shooting as bright as possible because in my testing, higher ISOs tend to look nice and have softer highlights, which more so looks like film, which looks nice. But if you shoot at high ISO, your image will be noisier. But when you bring down the image in post, it cleans up very nicely. I also only ever started really doing this when the HDR wheels became a thing because of how accurately you can change your exposure. So expose the camera really hot below clipping. You don't need to be so strict about getting it like right below clipping. You could just overexpose a little bit and bring it down as long as it's just not clipped in the highlights. There's only an exposure adjustment in the HDR wheel and we have softer highlights here low noise and a ton of flexibility. Look at where these shadows are. I can go before our exposure and say, let's bring the shadows up so we can have a flatter image where there's no noise in here because it was recorded even higher than that. So again, this is the 160 and this with the shadows bumped up. But even the difference between these two, like th th this is so much better in my opinion. I can get the advantage of a high ISO, softer highlights, and then also not have noise. So for shots like this, this works well. To be able to shoot at 3200 ISO with no noise, overexpose it below clip, and you're good to go. So it's kind of like a magic trick. Whether you shoot at the higher ISO or the lower ISO is up to you. I tend to be somewhere between 640 and 3200, and more often between 800 and 1600. A time that you would consider using a lower ISO to get a thick negative is when you're shooting in low light scenarios, like a low light interior scenario where the final image is supposed to be dark, you would want to shoot sometimes at a lower ISO so that if it's already gonna be dark, right off of the camera, you have a noiseless image. If you're shooting low light at a low ISO, technically you are overexposing. The lower ISO will make the image look darker, so then you react by giving it more light. Night interiors are tough, but shooting them at a little bit of a lower ISO is good. And outside in the bright light, a lot of what you're seeing is in the top end. It's bright. If you're inside in the dark, a lot of what you'll be seeing is in the low end in the dark. So you rate your camera to be working its best either down here or up here. And then adding in overexposing to get a clean image, to be able to be more flexible like I showed in the last video, basically creating light really is aided by having a thick negative and a lot of exposure so that you are bringing things up to not even the point of where they were shot, but it still looks like you've added a light in the background. Okay, uh, I think that's it, peace.